Hey, this is Brian from Built From Bricks, and I'm here with Chris at Bricks and Minifigs in Mansfield, Massachusetts. Hi, I'm Chris from Bricks and Minifigs in Mansfield, Massachusetts. And we have some questions to talk about him. The store opened, what, about a month ago? Yep, we've been open for just over a month. We opened grand opening on August 11th. And we wanted to talk to him a little bit and ask him what got him into Lego and a little bit about the store and a few other things. So I have some questions for him, and we're going to get going and see what he has to say. Excellent, thank you. So, and this is an obvious question, but... How long have you liked Lego? Um, I'm actually very new to Lego. I only got into Lego when my son started getting them, which was about three or four years ago. Um, so he actually opened up all of the boxes, took all the minifigures out, all the ninja guys, all the swords, and then threw away all the boxes and all the stuff that was in. So I ended up with a big bin of just loose Legos and dragon parts and everything, and I started playing with them. So, uh, I've only, I'm new to the game. I haven't seen a lot of the sets that are out there, so I'm, I'm out here learning every day. He does. I, I, I come in here and I see customers come in and they're like, oh, you have this set. And, and he knows a lot of them now, but he's still learning some too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's amazing how many products they've put out. Um, I've only really seen them in the Targets and Walmarts, and they only have about six months worth of product, so I've never seen the classic space pieces, the, you know, what they did in the 70s, what they were doing in the 80s, and now. Uh, they're all in the store. And, and, it's, and it's come a long way, as you know, I mean, color-wise and just the, the, t the complexity of the sets compared to the stuff in the, in the 80s and 90s, and even some of the 2000s stuff. But the original Harry Potter, they just had the new Harry Potter. Absolutely. Which Patrick, your, your co-owner, is a big fan of. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's how he started getting into it. He has, you know, the, the Star Wars and the Harry Potter sets, so he actually started getting into them on his own the more. Uh, the larger collectible series. Uh, so he started picking those up and I went over and played with his toys for a while too. What made you decide to open a Lego store? Um, both myself and Patrick were looking for a change of career uh, and we looked around, we looked through owning dogs, through any different number of things and looking through all the different franchises, this was really the one for us. Um, they were great with new owners, they helped us get up and running and it's a great product, it's a great environment, and it's a really fun thing to do. I mean, who doesn't want to open a toy store? Exactly. But what's, th what's different about your Lego store compared to a corporate Lego store? So there's official corporate Lego stores, and this is obviously not run by Lego, so it's, a, it's a, like you said, a franchise. So what's, yeah, what's the correct. biggest difference? What's the biggest um, difference? The, the biggest difference is we get to have a lot of fun. Um, they get to sell a lot of the things in boxes. They'll have all of the new products. But we have everything else that LEGO has ever produced. We can do LEGO parties, we can do uh, loose LEGOs, we can do LEGO sets out of the box, we can do a lot of different things that LEGO really doesn't have the capability of doing. Uh, so we don't actually try and compete with LEGO, we do all different new things with LEGO. Yeah, and you have a lot of sets on the shelf that are older sets that once LEGO is done with that and comes with something new, they, they get rid of it, they take it off the shelf. Yeah, absolutely. So people are still looking for those older Harry Potter sets, people are still looking for the good Star Wars movie sets, um, <laughs> and a lot of those aren't available anymore unless you're willing to get that one set that's new in box. They generally don't have the ones that people are looking for. My next question for you is, and maybe obvious, but maybe not, what's your favorite thing about running this store so far? Uh, my favorite thing is running the birthday parties. Um, I've, you know, I'm a, I have three kids at home, so I've done my fair share of birthday parties, and every time that we come in, we get, you know, 15 kids in there, packed to the gills, and we get to have a lot of fun. Yeah, and the birthday party is something that, again, you wouldn't do it at a regular store, and that's great that they have a, a place here to do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're just starting into our birthday party schedule. Uh, then we're going to start adding STEM events. We're going to start adding as many different uh, Lego-oriented things to do during the week as you can. Um, another thing that they can't really do with the Lego store, we can get a lot of people in the store to do all these Lego activities. So Lego League, adult fans of Lego, uh, STEM and robotics challenges, we're going to do them all. Oh wow, that's pretty impressive. So how has the customer response and business been since you've opened it? You said you've been open about a month or so. And yep. Has it been positive? Has it been it's, positive? It's been very positive. Uh, people who know Legos love Legos and they love coming in here. Uh, we try to be the most you know, uh, child-friendly and adult-friendly store as possible. So it's always a comfortable environment. Everyone comes in, stays for 45 minutes whether they buy anything or not, just to see all of the nooks and crannies because they're so small and they're so detailed. Uh, and, it's, and it's also fun. It takes a while to get through. And, and, and you can, yeah, and there's a lot of stuff in the store. There's a lot of different sections of the store. And we're going to 
go and film a little bit of that and show you some of the stuff in the store, the different sections of the store, and what, what um, Chris and Patrick have to offer here. All right, terrific. We're happy to. Now I'm here in the store with Patrick, and we are over at the user submitted section. So tell me a little bit about this. Uh, well, this is um, to display our customers' creativity, uh, what it is that they do with the bricks that they get from us uh, to, to kind of expand our store and what we do. So I see there's a bunch of Star Wars in here. There is. And then there's my, I have my set in there as well, which is the, the Tower of War thing. The now Evil the, Office Building. Yes, he remembers the name yeah. of it, Evil Office Building. And then any customer, if they have a nice set that they, that they want to bring in and display, they can put it here and then other customers come in and see it. So it's kind of a nice little thing you do to let customers show off their creations. Right. And, uh, that's what we're all about. Come in and play. And show us what you do. Now we're over here at the minifig case. And this is one of my favorite cases and areas of the store, only because there's so much stuff collecting-wise in here. There's stuff from movies, there's stuff from cartoons. What, what else do you have? What's in here that would customers um, come looking for? I know they collect, the people come in here for collections. Well, people want to outfit their droid army. We've got uh, clone troopers and storm troopers and droid, uh, droids all over the place. Um, but a lot of the collector series that we have, um, Ninjago and uh, The Simpsons, and we have Snowball in there, which I noticed for the first time, so that's fun. I see a lot of have Disney collectible minifigures and uh, Ninjago minifigures and just lots of stuff from different, different um, series. Like, I don't know what you call them. But. Yeah, the, the collector series things. Uh, series one through what? Are we got twenty one now at this point. Twenty one, yeah. Like and then the yeah. Harry Potter. Is this Harry Potter number twenty one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and, we, yeah, the Fantastic Beasts. We have a bunch of them. And then I see this big display behind you. What do you have behind you? Uh, these are our premium models, really. Uh, these are all the big guys. Uh, Ninjago City and the Tower Bridge. And, I went and slave one, and uh, yeah, these are all the ones that really don't have. Uh, they need a lot of shelf space, and, and well, this is the biggest shelf, so. Yeah, they, they can be the pricier ones. I see the Sydney Opera House back here, which is really cool set. Actually, seeing it in person is much more impressive than seeing it in a box. So I haven't actually I haven't seen that one before. There's just a lot of like the bigger sets, like you said, just a really cool place to display them. I see more we, we can get in the next section. We're over in the next. Part of the store, and what do we call this section? I see a lot of pre built models here, so what is this? Uh, yeah, these are all of our used models. Um, so we will buy, sell, and trade all things Lego, and a lot of them come in as uh, already finished models, so we'll go over them, make sure that they have um, all, if not you know, most of their parts, uh, and we will price them accordingly and set them up for, uh, for somebody else to take home and enjoy. Yes, and I, and I noticed there's, there's a lot in here, and I actually helped build one of them for you. Yeah, it's just fun. The yeah, Deadpool yeah. Lego, which is actually that's a great set if you're looking for for a Deadpool set. So that's the only one that exists, yep. actually. It is. And so it's a cool thing, that, and we didn't mention it earlier in the interview, but yes, they do buy and sell Lego. So you can come in with all kinds of stuff, and they pretty much will pick it up, you know, for the right price and yep. give you either what store credit or yeah, cash or store credit. Uh, always more in store credit because uh, we want to perpetuate the joy of Lego. Awesome. Well, thank you for this, and we're gonna see what else we have in here. We have moved on to the, you call this the build a minifig? Yeah, the minifig table. Yeah, so you get to do, what do you get here? What do we get here? We get like two or three uh, minifigs for a certain price? Or? Yeah, is there $4 a piece or three for $10? And you get to uh, legs, torso, head, uh, head piece, be it a helmet or a hair or goggles or something, and an accessory. Lots, lots of accessories. There's tons of accessories in here. There's cups and food, and I see chicken drums and bones and pizzas and spiders, everything that you can imagine for accessories is in this bin. Gotcha. And behind us we have this wall of, what is this? Uh, we have new in box, um, sets that have never been opened, and we have certified used sets which are um, guaranteed to be 100% accurate. Uh, everything as if it was brand new, uh, but it is a used model. So, so we have this here, and, and there's a little, they have this little thing on here, and it says certified used set, and it's been verified that it has everything in it, and this one was verified by Anthony. So different employees in the store will check the piece count? So yep. Not, yeah. not be that. We lay it all out uh, and match it up with the um, the parts list and uh, if all the parts are there then we can box it up and certify it. That's awesome and again you see a lot of cool sets that you wouldn't see in a Lego store. A lot of older sets. The Mask Train up there which is a really cool set. I actually owned that at one point. Yeah, that was a fun I, one. I sold it but maybe I'll get it again someday. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> it is right there. So this is the, like we said, the new sets and new sets and we're going to move on to a really cool section which is the empty bin of Lego, no not the empty bin of Lego, a full bin of Lego where you can fill cups and bags with Lego as well as really cool accessories and detail parts. We are over here in this enormous bin of Lego. Yes, it's our bulk bin. 
and this is, yes, and so here um, people can come in and buy, I noticed we have these little cups, I think are eight bucks to fill. $8, yep. Um, $20 for a small bag, medium bag for 40 and a large uh, in excess of a gallon bag for $80. Uh, and so you can jam as much stuff as you can fit into these things. And as long as it closes, it is yours. As long as it closes. And here you see the covers, when you put these covers on, they're always like bubbling up the top. Because it's closed. It's closed. <laughs> so that's really cool. And behind us we have lots of, this is where you get the detail for Lego. And we have lots of little cool accessory parts here. Walls and windows and doors and tree leaves sometimes I've seen in here. Wagon wheels. Elephant tusks and a lot of just a lot of really cool stuff in here, and that is kind of the stuff you build to add detail to your cities and adding, making it come to life. That's where it comes in. With adding those little details, I think is what makes a lot of this stuff pop. Absolutely, and we try to use this as a, a bit of an idea starter, so that you can see this and get the, uh, the details of what it is you want to build, and you can use the bulk to actually flesh it out. And I think some people are having fun here when they're putting some of these packs together because they have these kind of these rock wells here with a, a little mouse sitting on top for some reason. Mouse? <laughs> Why not? A little mouse in this one. There's, there's a frog in the one behind it. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think that's you know, they're trying to be funny. Yeah, we have fun. So this is a really cool section, and I spent a lot of time in here looking for parts for my zoo, and I also yeah. built a giraffe, which you've seen on previous episodes as well. It looks like we're in the birthday room. What happens here? Oh, this is where all of the magic happens. So uh, Bricks and Mini Things hosts a. Uh, a fully hosted birthday party. So we take care of everything. We take care of the setup, we take care of the cake, take care of the ice cream, take care of all of the plates and napkins and all of the fun stuff to make the best Lego hosted birthday party anyway. So they get to build, is there a theme? Do they just get their random build? Uh, we have specific challenges that we do for specific age ranges. So we try to keep everything age appropriate. We try to ask the family and the, and the special boy or girl what they want to do. So we have uh, one that was Batman themed a couple weeks ago. We yes. have one that's trucks themed coming up. So we're able to tailor whatever we do to whatever the customer wants. That's awesome. Our cameraman has a Batman Lego shirt on right now. Excellent. So we're, we're more than happy to incorporate anything. But we do have uh, lots of games that we do run. So after we do a building challenge, we'll have prizes that we can give out after each stage. So oh, nice. in addition to all of the goodie bags that we give out, we make sure that everybody has a lot of Legos going on. That sounds really cool. Yeah. If I was younger, I'd have my party here too. Yeah, I think Drew might have his kids' party here. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe Andrew. Maybe little Andrew. Yeah. So, well, that's very cool. And we're going to go move on to the one last thing in the store. Excellent. Very good. Let's go see our display model. So now we're at the final part of the store, which is his. Chris's creation, yes? Absolutely, so this is Bricksfield. Um, so it's our play table. Uh, we have stools and everybody can come up and play with all of our Legos. This is what everybody really wants in their house. Uh, it's a giant 70 square foot table full of the beach, the park, the construction yard, the graveyard, and all of the cool pieces that you can build with Legos. And so it's something that we use to showcase all of the things that you can build from bricks. Uh, all of the things that we have in the store can be found right here. You notice he said built from bricks. It's built from bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Anything but that can be built from bricks. There we go. There we go. A little, you know, cross promoting the, the show yeah, name absolutely. there. But, it, you know, customers can come up, like he said, and check it out. And he's got some really cool technique going on in the back with it. Some light, and it looks really cool when you know, the glow-in-the-dark yeah, stuff as well. Glow-in-the-dark, black light, some, you know, highlighting some of the features that you don't get to see every day. And like he's up. Really doing the water up, really getting a park looking good. And he's always expanding it and always adding stuff to it and playing with it and breaking stuff. And customers come in, they play and break as well. Yes, they do. So. We, we encourage them playing nicely. We have little signs that say, please play well. So that's our little in joke to make sure that everybody uh, doesn't try and destroy it. That's well, pretty cool. And I thanks for showing us the entire store today. We got to see a little bit of all of Bricks and Minifigs in Mansfield, Mass. It's at Mansfield Crossing. And Patrick helped out here on the camera. Absolutely. He's a little camera shy. We have Anthony working in the store today, and then some kids are here as well, yeah, playing, in the, playing in the Lego. Have fun and play. That's this what is kids what we're do. Doing here. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of Bricks and Minifigs, and don't forget to check us out on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter at Built From Bricks, and check out Bricks and Minifigs there at Bam, yeah, Bam Mansfield. Bam Mansfield on Instagram. Yes. On everything. On everything. And our Built and Bricks live stream every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're live in the studio and today we're live in Mansfield. Thanks for watching. What have you built today?